Welcome back. Today is National Indigenous Peoples Day and we're going to mark the occasion through food. Here to share Métis dishes made with foraged ingredients from the sunflower family is chef and culinary consultant Jenny Lassard. Jenny, it is so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for having me on. Well, we are delighted to have you join us. As Jess mentioned, it is National Indigenous Peoples Day. And so can you tell us a little bit about the traditions that are typically associated with this day? Well, normally it's when large groups of First Nations and Métis and Inuit peoples get together with other, other Canadians and people to celebrate um, our cultures, powwows, um, concerts, events. But of course, with COVID, that's all been kind of shrunk a little bit. So people this year are celebrating in their communities in smaller fashions, outdoor gatherings. Now you have prepared a beautiful spread for us here today that highlights cooking with plants from the sunflower family. Can you tell us about the significance of the sunflower family? Well, I was going in a competition a few years ago and I wanted to have something that reflected my Métis heritage. And I started thinking about dandelions and about sunflowers. And I came across a painting by Métis artist Leah Dorian. I got really inspired by that. And I thought of how one of the members of the sunflower family, dandelions, were not native to North America. They came from Europe and now they're kind of spread across, as we know, yeah. <laughs> spread across the country. <laughs> and then there's another member of the sunflower family, which is my absolute favorite vegetable that used to be quite um, prolific in North America. And it's the sunchoke or Jerusalem artichoke. So that was actually a very important crop. So you're going to be making a sunchoke gnocchi along with a dandelion pesto. This sounds incredible. Um, let's talk about the dandelion pesto first off. A lot of people mm -hmm. consider them a big nuisance, but I think this uh, segment is going to force us to look at them in a whole different way. If you were to sort of embark on wanting to start cooking with them, what do we need to know? Well, you want to make sure that you're getting them from a place that hasn't been sprayed. So you don't really want to go get them from a public park or... I mean, maybe you might want to talk to your neighbor at the beginning of the season and say, hey, don't spray your yard. I'll go harvest all your dandelions. <laughs> but every part of the dandelion can be eaten. The root is especially wonderful once it's mature. You can pull that out and it's a long tap root. You can dry that. You can make kind of a coffee with it or roast it and um, add a kind of a chicory flavor to your meals. But the dandelion greens, so I got these actually in the forest. So they're like technically wild, but obviously they originated somewhere, we're going to blanch it because it is a little bit bitter, right? If you've ever tasted dandelion greens, just a little bitter. And I think because as a we're kid. turning it into a pesto, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Everything goes yeah. in the mouth as a kid, right? You're like, what is this? <laughs> I was that kid, by the way. <laughs> so we've just put these dandelion greens into a pot of boiling water. So now it's turning this lovely dark green. Now we're going to throw it in, not throw it. We're going to respectfully place it in an ice <laughs> bath. <laughs> oh, the uh, ice bath. That. Jenny, I have a lot of fights about ice baths at my home. So, I mean, my partner always thinks they're so important. I'm like, ah, never mind the ice bath. But now that a <laughs> professional is here saying it, I'll do the ice bath more. I save all my cooking liquid to water my garden. So then we're just going to take a clean tea towel. Take our greens and wild, a little bit of wild garlic that I harvested um, on the hill behind our house. Just a touch of garlic, haha, -ha, I love garlic. It's <laughs> <laughs> and sage, which is of course a very important ingredient for medicines and for cooking in indigenous culture. I have this thing where I don't like to chop sage, I like to ham tear it. Just a little bit of Parmesan cheese, and then a little bit of lemon juice, and okay. sunflower oil. Okay, we'll just buzz that. <laughs> briefly oh wow. isn't that lovely oh gorgeous color so is there a noticeable difference in the taste from a regular pesto mm -hmm. like would you be able to fool your guests you wouldn't be able to fool them but you'd you'd intrigue them they'd say what did you mm -hmm. do with this pesto it has, it has a little je ne sais quoi i'm so excited about this this next component of the dish because i feel like you know everyone kind of loves gnocchi and it's made kind of typically with potatoes, but you're doing it with sunchokes. So I think it's another je ne sais quoi to this dish. Tell us more about it. So here is the sunchokes that we've peeled. 
you'll see when you see a photo of the sunchokes how they're a little bit tricky to peel. It's like a really overgrown ginger root. We've mashed it. We're going to add one egg. You can get a nice farm egg, that would be lovely. And flour. It's fairly easy. And then you're going to get in there with your, your nice ham. I'm coming to you today <laughs> from the Capel Valley, which is Treaty 4 territory and the homeland of the Métis. So we're just cutting these into, I don't know, about half an inch size pieces. So Jenny, I feel like I'm starting to see sunchokes more and more in my local green grocers, but if you can't find them and maybe you don't want to use potatoes, can you sub in anything else? I've actually made it with carrots. Oh yeah, it's a gorgeous color. It's wonderful with sage. So you could actually put the sage right inside. And then we're just making a little divot. So this little divot is just to soak up a little bit more of our dandelion greens pesto. Do you ever fry your sage, like to get it crispy and then you do the gnocchi in that? I do. So when we finish this, I've made a brown butter and we can throw some oh. sage into it. And then as you're finishing mm. the gnocchi in the pan. I love this. Okay, so we've got boiling salted water. We throw those in. And when they rise to the top, they are done. Can we talk about foraging for a moment? I understand that you do forage for a lot of your ingredients and, and you're also very passionate about sustainable foraging. I'm reading braiding sweetgrass right now, so I know one of the indigenous oh. practices is to never take more than, than you need. But what are some other really important indigenous teachings when it comes to um, sustainable foraging? What, what should we know? Well, I always knew when I was foraging, even as a young child, that there just felt like there were certain places you shouldn't pick. And I kind of listened to the to the plants. So sometimes there would be a big juicy blueberry and something would just tell me, no, not, maybe it was meant for a bear, I don't know. So there's so many other creatures and organisms that need those plants too, not just us, right? When I harvest out at Wanaske, when I was taught to lay down tobacco. So for each plant nation that I'm going to be picking, whether it's stinging nettle, for a puree or Saskatoon berries or cattail hearts. I'll lay down tobacco, say a thank you, and sometimes even tell the plant what I'm going to be using it for. So, mm. hey, Downy Line Greens, I'm going on a show called The Social. We're going to be making a pesto with you <laughs> and just honoring that and um, doing that. that for each separate plant. There are rules too. So a lot of cities have, have bylaws of where you can forage and where you can't. And also being aware of if you're on someone's traditional land. Look at oh. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I want gnocchi so bad tonight now. You should. So just pound saute yeah. those and then we'll toss it with the pesto. I was thinking about another way to mark National Indigenous Peoples Day this year. I think people will be less celebrating as they will be honoring and recognizing and just taking pause. Mm -hmm. And some of the wonderful ways you can do that is to support an Indigenous business, whether it's an Indigenous food restaurant or a caterer or a vacation property that you can go to. I think that's really super important to put our economic um, power yeah. where our mouth and intentions are. So Jenny, you've got this uh, beautiful sun choke gnocchi frying up in some, oh. some butter and some sage, and now you're gonna pull it together with the dandelion yeah. pesto. Oh, it's so green. You know what you could do? I'm just thinking this right now. Add a little bit of ricotta cheese and it could be yeah. a dumpling, a filling. Oh my goodness. Or even spread it on a pizza. Oh yeah. my goodness, a bannock pizza with you dandelion could... seed pesto sauce. Oh my gosh. Give us a little toss, coat it all up here, slide that onto the plate. Beautiful. And then we'll top it with whatever Parmesan cheese you can afford. So you can do fresh shaved, you can do a grana padano. Oh, that. that wasn't hard, like that didn't take very long. Anybody can do this, your children can yeah. do it. I'm gonna try one, do you mind? Yeah, you have yes, to taste no, one please do. Mm. Oh. Mm -hmm. We are just living vicariously through you, Jenny. Thank you so much for joining us and bringing your just lovely energy and this beautiful, inspiring <laughs> recipe collection. We are so delighted to meet you. Thank you for having me. I need to clean up a bit now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to find these incredible recipes, you can head to our social media pages after the show and don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.